hello good day my glorious families i welcome you all to today's chapter of the day the book of the day today is in the book of luke 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 chapter 18 as we read together and learn together may the spirit of god teach us and give us a good take-home lesson today in Jesus name amen the parable of the persistent widow hmm. that sounds like something that will be interesting now he told them a parable on the need for them to pray always and not give up there was a judge in a certain town who didn't fear God or respect people and a widow in that town kept coming to him, saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he was unwilling. But later he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or respect people, yet because this widow keeps pestering me, I will give her justice so that she doesn't wear me out by a persistent coming. Hmm. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God grant justice to his elect who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay helping them? Hmm. I'll tell, okay, I tell you that he will swiftly grant them justice. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, he will he find faith on it? Hmm. God have mercy. I have a question for you viewers. Is it right to tell God the kind of justice you want? Because sometimes when things go out of hand and you say, God, you cry to God how you want your justice to be. Is that the right thing to do? Okay, let's continue. That is verse, nine, verse 8. So we're going to verse 9, which has another subheading, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee was standing and praying like this about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like the other people, greedy, unrighteous, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of everything I get. But the tax collector standing far off would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but kept striking his chest and saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you, this one went down to his house justified rather than the other because everyone who exalts, exalts himself will be humbled. But the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Hmm. That is the hard fact. May God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Let's go to verse 15. Verse 15. That's verse 14. Let's go to verse 15. It says, Blessing the children. That's another subheading. People were bringing infants to him so he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. Jesus, however, invited them. Let the, let the little children come to me and don't stop them because the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child, oh Lord, I'm so sorry about that. Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child, let me see where I am, like a little child, we never enter it. Do you know what that means? It means that because the little child, little children, you know, when you do something to them, they don't keep grudge. They just, they cry. Even if you do them wickedness, they still come back again to the same you. Because their heart is just so pure and they are so innocent. So, I pray God will help us. Then verse 18 says, another subheading, the rich young ruler. 
the rich young ruler. A ruler asked him, God teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked him, no one is good except God alone. You know the con commandment. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. I, w I have kept all this from, from my youth, he said. When Jesus heard this, he told him, you still lack one thing. Sell all you have and contribute it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. After he heard this, he became extremely sad because he was very rich. <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyway, this is more like a parable, okay? Because everything Jesus did was a parable. God knows his heart. Like, Jesus already saw his heart that he, he loves his rich, riches more than the way he, he loves God. So, that was why that thing was said to him. I know the reason why I had to say that because some people read the Bible casually and believe the way it is said is just the way it is. Sometimes it is just telling us some other things. Possessions and the kingdom. That's another subbed in and that's verse 24. Seeing that he became sad, Jesus said, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. That doesn't mean the rich cannot enter the kingdom of God. Like I said, that was an adage. That was more like a proverb. Because when you when anything you anything you raise above God, whatever you cannot anything you you know you cherish more than God is already your God. So you know that's what that place means. Those who heard this ask, then who can be saved? He replied, What is possible with man is possible with God. Then Peter said, Look, we have left what we had and followed you. So he, he said to them, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left a house, wife or brother or sisters or parents or children because of the kingdom of God, who will not receive many times more at, the, at this time and eternal life in the age to come. Okay, so God will do more for us. The third prediction of his death. That's verse 31. Then he took to he took the twelve the twelve aside and told them, <clears throat> See, we are going up to Jerusalem. Everything that you everything that is written through the prophets about the Son of Man will be accomplished. <clears throat> Please pardon my voice, I'm so sorry. For it will be handed over to the Gentiles and will be mocked, insulted, spit on, and after they flog him. They will kill him and he will rise on the third day. They understood none of these things. The, the meaning of the saying was hidden from them and they did not grasp what, he, what was said. <laughs> Even if they grabbed, they wouldn't have believed because they would be feeling, why would that be? Anyway, I'm running out of time, so I might not be able to cover up. Okay, 18. Okay, I think I'm almost done. So let's move on to 19. Another subheading says, a blind man receives his sight. Verse 35. As he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the road begging. Hearing a crowd passing by, he required what was happening. Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, they told him. So he called out. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those in front of him told him to keep quiet, but he kept crying out all, all out, out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and commanded that he be brought to him. When he came closer, he asked him, what do you want, want me to do for you? Lord, he said, I want to see. Receive your sight, Jesus told him, your faith has saved you instantly he could see and began to follow him glorifying god all the people when they saw it gave praise to god okay verse uh, oh i think that's it oh that's the last one i meet up thank you for joining me i really appreciate that's the end of verse 18 but let me quickly see what i can put there he said we should make sure we do not have spiritual blind spots that cause us to use the christian faith as a means to honor ourselves may god help us in jesus name thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate but remember that god um like when he sh um, the blind man shouted jesus help me 
I also say, Lord, have mercy on me.